Swift GPI focuses on enhancing the cross-border payment experience and underlying process. However, some issues remain a roadblock in the fast and smooth processing of payments, such as incorrect beneficiary account details or missing market-specific information that can delay the payment from being credited. Well, Swift is piloting two new GPI initiatives to tackle these pain points. And to discuss this in more detail, we're joined in the studio by Wim Raymakers, who's Global Head of Banking Market at Swift. Welcome. Also, Graham Stanfield, he's Senior Manager of Product Development at National Australia Bank. Welcome. And Mark McNulty, Mark is Head of Global Clearing and FI Payments at City. Welcome. OK, Wim, let's start with you, because Swift named the father of GPI, or you personally, but look, these cross-border payment concerns, there was an assumption they had been solved. We've read that 2 to 5% of these payments are still subject to an inquiry or investigation. So tell us more about these exceptional issues in the processing system. What's happening here? Well, they are exceptional. Eh? So, and parroting is a continuous job. So we're always looking to improve the straight-through processing of these payments. Um, and Sometimes it can go wrong. It could be uh, a wrong account number or some information missing in the payment. And we all want these payments to go fast or instantly. So it cannot be that you do your payment in a few seconds and it takes two or three days to resolve the issue underlying the payment. So that's why we are looking to further improve these payments and make them go fast as well. Mark, as a global transaction bank, you must probably see quite a large number of these in, in absolute numbers on a daily basis. Uh, how do you experience these and why and, and where do they have such an impact? We do see a large number. Um, you know, we see probably about 1% um, of payments that we transact on a cross-border basis um, getting raised in terms of queries or exceptions. And that probably benchmarks pretty well uh, across the industry, but it's still a very large number. Um, and that problem is added to because it takes a very long time to actually solve those queries once they are raised. Um, so there's a couple of reasons that actually add um, or drive the lack of timely resolution. And firstly, uh, is that often the issue is identified far too late in the payment chain. So for example, uh, a payment gets made uh, all the way to the beneficiary bank only for then it to be identified that the beneficiary uh, account number is not a valid account number at that beneficiary bank. So the payment has to unwind all the way back to the ordering customer and then be reissued again. A matter, it can take days to um, uh, do those various different unwinding and reaffecting transactions. Uh, second big issue uh, as to why it takes so long to resolve these queries is that there's no existing dynamic query management system or protocols uh, between banks. Uh, so it's a very antiquated process across Swift messaging, old MT199 messages, uh, which means that there's no transparency, there's no rules around turnaround times, and there's no dynamic connectivity that gives that transparency of where the case is. So all these issues uh, compound the original issue, uh, meaning that queries aren't getting resolved timely, um, which means that our clients are getting a very poor experience when they do have a query, uh, which has real life impact in terms of the payment obligation not being settled when it was intended to be settled. And for example, that resulting in goods not being shipped when they're due to be shipped. Mm. Uh, and Graham, from your perspective, what's causing these, these d delays when an investigation is required? Mm. Look, the issue is really inherent in the whole correspondent banking network. We've got over 11,000 banks connected to the network. and. Um, we don't have direct communication between point to point across that whole wide um, worldwide network. So we rely on our, um, our intermediaries to pass on messages. We don't have standardization on, on the message format. So we're using a, a free text format message that we're sending um, across the network. So we rely on our intermediaries being able to pass that message on to the, to the end beneficiary bank or back to us if we're the sending bank. And then we've also got the time zone issues. We're from Australia. We're on the other side of the world. Um, you're asleep you're at night <laughs> when, when, we're, when we're trying to um, investigate these issues. So these are some of the big concerns that we're trying to resolve with this new case resolution service. Wim, as we've said, these can have a significant impact, but how can they be tackled? Well, they can be tackled in two ways. You either make sure they don't happen. So we're looking at a pre-validation service where you can pre-validate your payment 
So I can shoot something over to you saying, would you be able to process this? And you can reply to me even before doing the payment. So we avoid all the issues that Mark just highlighted. Or for payments that are in flight and that have an issue to be resolved, we're looking at fast case resolution, which is like what Graham was pointing out. So that once you have these queries, they can be resolved very quickly and the payment can continue on its way. And I'm glad you used the word validation because that brings me quite neatly to you, Mark, because city has been involved in the recent pre-validation pilot. And in particular, you focused on beneficiary account verification. So what did you test? And did it require major changes to the bank's existing infrastructure? And from your assessment, how well did that test go? Yeah, so we're part of the pre-validation uh, pilot, an initiative that is uh, under the banner of GPI. And the first thing to say is that we feel that this is a super important initiative uh, because GPI to date has done a fantastic job of building and delivering transparency on the cross-border payment experience. But what we need to now do is deliver a cross-border payment experience that is 100% certain back to the underlying client. And if we do pre-validation in the right way, it can give that 100% certainty back to the underlying client. So anytime they initiate a payment, they know exactly when it's going to be delivered as they expected. Uh, so we feel that this pre-validation uh, has the uh, potential to be really transformative in delivering that 100% certainty back to the ordering client, which is absolutely critical. Um, so where we are now is we've started in the pre-validation pilot, which is um, with a, a group of banks, um, including um, with Graham is looking to validate the actual beneficiary account number. And that's where we're starting. Uh, so we've internally built the APIs on the Swift API, uh, SwiftNet API platform. Uh, we've done internal testing uh, across our own network. Mm. Uh, so tested the functionality across our own network. Uh, and next month, we will look to uh, move into partner bank testing uh, to test that validation um, with partner banks and make sure that we're you know, exposing it to the ecosystem. We'll also expose our own ledger and our own account numbers to the ecosystem so others can take advantage and pre-validate uh, those account numbers before they send a payment to us. Um, and once we come out of that pilot uh, early next year, we'll look to integrate that pre-validation capability into our core payment processes and channels so that our customers can start taking advantage and in essence pre-validate the payment, make sure that it's destined for the right account before it leaves their account. You mentioned partner banks. Graham, National Australia Bank as well was an active pilot in the beneficiary account verification pilot. Are you convinced this is the way to go? And, uh, and what value did you perceive in the trial and what did you expect to perceive? And, and, and can it bring value even when only a few banks sign up? Yeah, look, we, we totally believe in the pilot. We want our payments to get their first time um, correctly. We don't want to have to um, correct and repair payments. Um, it's, it's all about customer experience. It's all about customer outcomes that we deliver the right outcome straight away. We really want to put this service into our channels, so into our corporate portal, so that the customers can can self-correct as, um, as they're keying the payment instruction so that they know up front that they've got the right supplier bank details, that they will, they will be able to get their payment to where it's intended. Um, that's, what we're, um, we're, that's what we're trialling. And even with a small number of banks, it's, it's going to prove that the service is very valuable and then we want to extend it. So we, we are going to start with um, um, beneficiary bank details, but we're also looking as a network with, um, with Mark and others to um, how we can extend this service to look at other types of, um, is it um, fixed formats or other um, elements in the met payment message that we can also validate so that payments do arrive first time correctly and um, get there instantly. Mm, so clearly, when there is a need for this and this incredible enthusiasm, of you, as you've heard just now. So from Swift's point of view, what is the timeline for an account verification service? So the timeline is uh, we're currently in pilot, testing the system. And towards the end of the year, early next year, we'll deploy it in live. And then we'll look to build further adoption and early adoption and critical mass, community building. That's the thing that Swift and with its partner banks is used to do. Yeah, so 2020 in time for the next cyborgs. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> when you Every year also something new. <laughs> you mentioned also uh, a payment validation exercise as part of this pre-validation. Uh, what should we read into? What should we understand by this? When, when will it become available? So what, what that is, it's a, a natural lead on from the account beneficiary validation is to provide even more possibilities to validate the payment upfront. 
like what Mark was illustrating, when you do a payment in a certain currency, sometimes there are certain conditions. There's like rules around that currency, that country. So it would be interesting to know those rules up front rather than to know them afterwards. So payment validation is a complement to the account verification to bring those rules and that knowledge, that intelligence, right at the moment when you're doing the payment. So the two go very much together. Mm. And broadening things out further, Mark, apart from the pre-validation service, City also believes in GPI case resolution service potential. So where are you in designing and piloting this service? And what do you expect from it? Yeah, so again, case resolution, you know, is, um, is super important uh, from our perspective. I'm personally very passionate about it. I started in our case resolution department within City uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so, um, you know, understand uh, the challenges there, the impact on the client. And if you look and think about GPI uh, and you look at what you can see from uh, the stats, you can see that you know, the vast majority of payments are going super fast, right? Mm. You know, 50% of payments are settling within 30 minutes end to end, right? So it's a very fast experience. It can get faster, but it's already a very fast experience. So we got to focus on not just the happy path as such, but also where there's problems, where there's challenges, where there's a challenge, where there's an exception raised or a payment doesn't uh, go STP. How do we resolve those issues? Because those are the issues that impact our client. And the problem with today's world is that there's no digitized interactive way for us to exchange information between banks. It's still a very antiquated old process where we have banks sending non-connected messages one-to-one -one who forwards it onto the next bank, who forwards it onto the next bank. The, next, the last the bank chain. in the chain doesn't understand what they got, so they reverse it and it, it just takes days and days before a query is resolved for what can be a very, very simple query of, I just need a few extra details to uh, apply this payment. Mm -hmm. um, so this is why we think GCase is super important. Um, you know, we, our expectation is that by digitizing uh, this whole uh, interbank query management process and protocol, and by creating business rules and standards around how do we interact with each other, what timelines do we resolve with each other, we can deliver to our clients an experience when they do have a query that is much faster in terms of dynamically resolving the query and much more certain in the sense they know what they're going to get and they have transparency on exactly where that query is along the query management chain. Mm -hmm. So again, like pre-validation, uh, we are at a stage where we're in the pilot. We've built the APIs to connect into the GCase tracker. Uh, we're about to go into a partner bank testing. Um, and again, this is be for 2020. Uh, once we come out of the pilot, uh, we'll look to integrate that into our front end portals uh, where we're actually translating that ecosystem benefit back and the transparency back to the underlying client. Graham, how is case resolution different from other solutions being discussed or offered uh, on the market? Um, yeah, that's a, it's an interesting question. It's, there's what we need to do here with, with um, this case of resolution um, option is, is to leverage what we've been doing with the GPI uh, network, getting the banks to, to um, take up the, the service very fast, like we did with GPI. Um, it's, um, that's going to be really important to the success of it. But we've proven that the banks can respond fast with, with how we've all responded to GPI. Um, we'll be able to use the, um, um, the tracking service as a centralised um, um, solution um, to, to, to provide that connectivity between all the banks. And we'll be able to use standardised messaging so that we've got the right, right solution in place. Okay, and, and when do you see this going live in 2020? Well, these gentlemen uh, just well, laid out their plans, oh yes. <laughs> it, will, it will go live. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and also to, to Grant's point, we, it's, it's a community approach. It's co-creation mm. with banks and also with application vendors. So we actively involve those vendors because at the end of the day, they generate and process these transactions. And it makes sense because everybody benefits. Yes. Exactly. Totally. We're speaking about everybody benefiting. Mark and Graham, you seem convinced this is going to be beneficial mm. to the whole community. But what's your message to those that are not quite playing ball as yet? Play ball. <laughs> um, Keep it simple. <laughs> why, why we believe in these initiatives and we believe them under the, the GPI um, banner is because they're open to the entire ecosystem. Right, and, and Graham mentioned earlier the, the sort of critical word, which is critical mass, right? Mm. You need to get critical mass so you can deliver value to your underlying clients at scale in a very consistent way. 
or clients don't want a sort of an experience for 20% of their flows, a different experience for 40% and so on. We want to give them a, a consistent experience for all their flows, all their queries. So that's the beauty of what we're doing under the GPI, GCase, and pre-validation uh, initiatives. Uh, but to derive that full value, we do need to get that critical mass. Um, so the potential is there, the value is there, it's clear to me. Uh, but we do need um, you know, more uh, banks to embrace these initiatives like they embrace GPI, mm. uh, track and trace, the core GPI. And if we get that, we're going to be able to deliver value at a scale like no other. Okay, and given that importance, I mean, we've been talking about it, it's fascinating stuff. So for all the banks that are here at Cybos who aren't on board, mm. where can they find out about it? Tuesday morning. GPI revealing the roadmap, where we'll cover all the exciting new developments in the roadmap, including pre-validation and case resolution. And Tuesday afternoon, two specific sessions, one going into pre-validation, the other one in the afternoon on case resolution. We invite everybody to come and listen and join and discover. Right, so there's no excuse for not playing ball. No, and the, <laughs> early, the early adopter program is still open. We're encouraging everyone to join us. Fantastic. Mm. Interesting stuff. Well, if you see these guys at Cybos 2019, do go over and have a chat. Gentlemen, that's all the time we have for you this afternoon. Sadly, Wim Rainmaker's Global Head of Banking Market at Swift. Mark McNulty, Head of Global Clearing and FI pay, uh, Payments at City, And Graham Stanfield, Senior Manager Product Development at National Australia Bank. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, enjoy Cybos 2019. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much. Thanks.